trinomials when a is greater than one okay so when a is greater than one uh, like the other video the first video in the series is a is equal to one when we're factoring trinomials um this is when a is greater than one which is slightly more complicated um you should have on a sheet of paper take some notes okay um so this is factoring when a is greater than one so the steps are different but same concept math with the speed math with the speed there's a thousand of the places that you'd rather be but you're watching math with the speed um when a is greater than one what you're going to do is you're going to multiply a times c first so that's step one um then you're going to find two numbers that multiply to give you a times c so whatever you got from the first step and then that add to give you b that should sound familiar to you okay because that's similar to what we did the first time and then you want to put those factors under ax you want to simplify and write your factors what does this all mean well i got you boo so let's say you have 4x squared plus 43x plus 30. first you're going to multiply a times c that is step one what is a four good job what is c 30. good job so i'm gonna do four times 30. that's gonna give me 120. there's gonna be a lot of factors of 120. it's okay use your calculator to find them one times what 120 duh so two times 60 good three times 40 good four times 30 good five times 24 good six times 20 good eight seven doesn't go into there so we skipped straight to eight times 15 good um nine doesn't go into there so we skipped to 10 10 times 12 um and what we're going to realize is that to get a 43 the common mistake here is to do the 4 and the 30 but you should do the 3 and the 40 okay everything is positive so my job is easy I don't have to make any of these numbers negative so what I'm gonna do is do not say x plus 3 and x plus 40 because we're doing a different type of problem than we were in the first video that 4x squared tells me because there's a number in front of the x squared it tells me that I have to do this problem differently so we're gonna take that 4x at the beginning of our problem we're gonna put it over the first factor which is 3 and we're gonna take the 4x again and we're gonna put it over 40 we're gonna simplify our fractions the first fraction 4 over 3 I can't simplify it so I'm gonna go ahead and leave it alone the second fraction however 4 over 40 is gonna be the same thing as 1 over 10 so when I simplify I'm gonna get x over 10 or 1x over 10 same thing so now these are my factors 4x plus 3 and x plus 10. i know you're like whoo that was a lot miss b it's okay okay i'm gonna reiterate first multiply a times c so the first number times the last number 120 make a list of factors use your calculator what well, well, you know 120 divided by 2 what does that give you 2 times 60 okay great 120 divided by 3 blah 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 until you're done with the list um then you find the right combination that's going to give you the middle number which is 43 in this case so i add 4 plus 40 and that gives me um so i go through the list and once i go through the list i find the proper combination that's going to give me the middle number when i add them so 3 plus 40 gives me 43 so that's why i chose that combination i would take the 4x from the original problem the orange 4x and i put it over 3 the first number that i figured out and then i put four, the same 4x over 40 the second number that i figured out and i simplify any of those fractions if they can be simplified 4 over 3 can't be simplified so i'm just going ahead and leave it alone and then x over 10 uh, was the answer to 4x over 40 being simplified. So then I just write my factors, 4x plus 3 and x plus 10. Yay! This is one of those methods that your teacher might not like. Obviously, if you're my student, I like it because I'm teaching it. Um, it's also one of those things that I like can't explain why it works, but I just know that it works. Um, so this is the method that I use. And maybe I'll make more videos with the other methods. Who knows? Anyway, example number two. Uh, multiply a times c first. What is a times c, everyone? Six. Good job. What are the factors of six? One times six. Two times three. Which one is going to give me a negative five? 
Hey now, this is where we get a little bit tricky sometimes because six minus one could give me a five. Um, and then one plus negative six could give me a negative five. And then negative two plus negative three could also give me a negative five. So which combination do we choose? Well, this is where it's important that you make sure that you multiply the, the answers and that you add the answers together because when I multiply them, I need my answers to come out to be a positive six when I multiply them. So if I multiply a negative one and, I mean, sorry, when I multiply a positive one times a negative six, I would get a negative six. But when I add those two numbers, I still get a negative five. But what's wrong with that is that I need a positive six, so I can't use that combination. So I'm definitely gonna go ahead and use the two and the three, and I'm gonna make the two negative and the three negative, because negative times a negative equals a positive. Thank you very much. And that negative plus that negative is gonna give me a negative five in the middle. So we're gonna take the purple three B from the problem, put it over the first factor, which is negative two. The same purple three B, we're gonna take it and we're gonna put it over a negative three. We're gonna simplify our fractions. Uh, three over negative two, can't really do nothing about that. Three B over negative three, I can simplify that. That's gonna be one over negative one. So then this is my answer, three B minus two, B minus one. Not one B minus one because we, we understand there's a one in front of that B, so. I have one more example to do by myself and then you have three to do on your own, so pay attention. Five N squared plus 19 N plus 12. Okay, what do you do first? Multiply A times C. Good job, everyone. <laughs> so A times C is Remember, you should be doing this with me, not just staring at me, because you want to learn. Five times 12, good, five times 12 equals 60. Find two factors that add to give you B. So first, let's start with one. One times, 60. Two times, 30. Three times, 20. Four times, 50. Five times, 12. Six times, 10. I don't know why I didn't write 6 times 10 on there. Um, 7, 8, you, there's more. <laughs> Shame on me. Okay, so we're definitely going to choose 4 and 15 because that's how we're going to get that little 19 in the middle. 4 times 15. So we're going to take the purple 5n and we do 5n over 4. 5n over 15. Simplify. This is important. 5 over 4 is already simplified, so I'm going to leave that one alone. But 5 over 15 I need to simplify, what is it gonna be? Good job! <laughs> um, one over three, good. So this is my answer, five n plus four, n plus three. Okay, this is time to try on your own. So I'm gonna give you three examples, one at a time of course, and you're gonna see if you can get them without my help. I'll go over them after your time is up, okay. Let's do 3P minus P minus 5. 60 seconds on the clock. Can you read me the night? Tell me it's raining. Um, so first, of course, we want to multiply a times c, so 3 times negative 5, so that's going to give me negative 15, so I have 1 times 15 and 3 times 5. That was a really easy list of factors that I gave you. So I need one that's going to give me a negative 2. 1 and 15, no matter how I chop it up, 1 plus 15, 15 minus 1 is not going to work out to give me a 2. But that 3 and that 5, though, right? How am I going to get a negative 2? Well, I'm going to go ahead and make that 5 negative because 3 minus 5 is going to give me negative 2. So I'm gonna take the 3p, the purple 3p from the problem. We're gonna do 3p over three, the first factor, and then the same 3p over negative five. 
Which one are we gonna simplify? The first one or the second one? The first one, good. So three over three simplifies to one over one. And three over negative five doesn't simplify, so I'm gonna leave that alone. And voila, ladies and gentlemen, we have our answer. P plus one and three P minus five. Okay, try next one. Time is gonna be up in three, two, one. Yes. Um, multiply a times c, two times negative nine. Of course, that's your first step. That's gonna give me negative eighteen. So let's do factors of negative eighteen. One times eighteen, two times nine, three times six. Four doesn't go into eighteen. Five doesn't go into eighteen. Six is already on the board. That's how I know my list is complete. So I'm going to try to figure out which one's gonna give me a three. One plus 18, 18 minus one, not gonna do it. Two plus nine, nine minus two, not gonna give me a three. But three and six though, if I do six minus three, hey now, I got something going. So I'm gonna take the two n, put it over negative three, and I'm gonna take the two n, I'm gonna put it over six, and I'm gonna see which one needs simplifying. Does two over negative three need to be simplified? Nah. Does two over six need to be simplified? Yes, to one third. So two n minus three, n plus one. Yay! Um, ooh, I think this is your last example. One minute on the clock. <laughs> Multiply your A times your C. A. Two times two is four. My factors are four. Are one times four, two times two. We love to see it. We need a five. Which one's gonna give us a five? Not that two and that two, right? Two plus two is four. So yes, one plus four is five. So two and over one. Two and over four. Which one can be simplified? The left or the right? That right hand side, very good, very good. So one over two is the same as two over four. And we have our answer, two n plus one and n plus two. Listen, if you can do this one, everything else should be easy breezy uh, lemon squeezy. I don't even know what I'm saying. <laughs> what do I say at the end of every video? Go back. Okay. See if you can do this on your own without my help. Practice. Staring at me doing it does not mean you know how to do it. And if not, I'll see you in the next one. Later.